Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Clearwater Fishing. And you clicked on this video because you're interested in installing or you're thinking about installing the Dexter Easy Flex Equalization System. Now the one I have today is going on a Nitro Bass Boat Trailer. I believe this is a Trail Star Trailer. Yep, Trail Star Trailer. We'll go over the intricacies with that. But before we get started, I wanna show you the part number I'm using. This is for the 33 inch axle spacing between the two. It is 6,000 pounds uh, capacity. And here is our part number. Hopefully y'all see that really well. That is the kit we are installing today. It came in this really nice box here. Um, there was a box and a box and a box, but it came repackaged very well in here. Uh, I am not disappointed in the packaging. I've seen some reviews on where the packaging well, it's not that great. So anyways, that so far has been good. Let's go quickly over what you get in this kit. Uh, you get four sh shackles. Uh, these are already pre-mated together. Um, I'll show you a bolt real quick so I can give you guys an idea real quick of why they're already mated together. So the bolts here, let me get my face out of the, the bolts here have these little ridges here to keep the bolt from turning. So they've already been pressed in here and look how thick these guys are. There you go. They are very thick. They have grease inserts. So it's a wet bolt system. Pretty excited about that. We have our brass inserts for the other set for the other half of the shackle because when you install the equalizer, it already has the brass insert in. And here is the equalizer. This is what it looks like. Uh, it's got this large rubber piece here to help absorb energy from one axle to the other. You have grease inserts on top here for your middle. And then obviously your bolt uh, grease inserts are gonna grease this area as well. So the reason I'm installing this, I am a little worried about the condition of the trailer. It makes lots of popping, squeaking, lots of you know not good noises when I'm backing or turning sharp or even just going over some small bumps. It gets kind of concerning. I've seen some horror stories from some Nitro guys about their shackles completely wearing through and then they're just breaking apart. So that worries me as well. So. I wanted to spend the money and take the time to upgrade to these kits. So before we get started, I do want to go over some tips that I have read online. I just want to present them. They're not my own tips and I am intending on following them. Uh, first thing is, is some of the grease inserts, uh, I think they're called Zerk fittings. I've always called them grease fittings. I don't know what you guys call them. I've heard that some people had issues with these working. So I am going to test them all before I get started. They're going to need grease anyways, so I'm going to get them. I'm going to start that here in a minute. Also, uh, one of the bigger tips here is someone mentioned to take all the force off your axles, so you need to lift your entire vehicle up or trailer up off of the ground, so the axles no longer have any weight on them. So in that case, I, I got four jack stands. I intend on doing that with. Uh, just to make sure that the axles aren't in a bind in any way. And they told me, or at least I read, it makes lining things up much easier so I don't have to use clamps and stuff to force things in the way, you know, with a hammer and stuff. All right, so let's jump on over to the tools and let's check those out. Um, just give you kind of an idea of what I brought and then, hey, we'll see what comes after that. Okay, starting off here, we have our grease. Uh, just brought some extra tubes of grease. And then over here is the grease gun. Uh, I have miscellaneous uh, assorted fittings and stuff. Uh, I did bring a tape measure in case I needed to measure some stuff out. I am going to take a pre-measurement ground to uh, fender on all my wheels. So we're gonna do that before we get started. I brought some clamps. Hopefully I don't need these. If I do, at least I have them here. Uh, you need four jack stands to, to support your vehicle, to take the load off of your axles. 
Um, also, you need a, some kind of lug nut wrench. So I have a lug nut wrench. I brought a torque wrench uh, in case I need to torque something down. I need two jacks. This is a bottle jack, and then I have a larger uh, floor jack over here. Just hanging out over there. Uh, got that ready. I have a ratchet. It's actually up on the boat. I need to go grab it. And then also a whole bunch of wrenches. Uh, and one last thing, you are going to be on the ground quite a bit. So I did bring some kind of padding to sit on. So I, I should be at least a little more comfortable and keeping myself off this cold concrete. Last two tools that I brought, a punch to knock out the nylon inserts that are already installed along with a hammer. Whoops, this hammer, this hammer here. So uh, last two tools that I remember that I brought. So real quickly, I am going to measure the distance from the ground to the top of my fender here. I'm gonna do this for all four. The first one, uh, let's see, driver front is uh, 27 and 7 sixteenths. This one is 27 even. I'm gonna move along to the other side. I know y'all can't see me. This one is 26 and an eighth. I think that tire is actually a little low. So that's probably a contributor to there. And then we have 26 and a half. So this side is definitely lower. Might be a good reason why I'm checking this stuff out. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and lift the trailer up, put it on jack stands, and I'm gonna go ahead and take the tires off on this side. And we're gonna go through the process on one side. You know, bear with me, it'll be you know, instantaneous for you, but for me, it's gonna take a few minutes. So, y'all you know, hang out and enjoy. So I've already got the boat lifted up and on stands, got the wheels off, and I did take some time to check out my grease inserts. Some of them are rather tough. So what I did to help out the process is I took just a little punch, or you can use a screwdriver or something, and just break the ball seal loose on the end of the grease insert. Let's see, let me grab a bolt here. So let's see if I can get a good view for y'all. There's just a little bitty ball here. And all you gotta do is just press it one little time to break the initial seal. For some reason, that seal's really tight the first time for some reason. And then it gets much easier after that. I'm just using a punch. You guys can use a screwdriver or something. Just a little tip for me. Also, another big tip that is going to be probably pretty big for this is to pre-grease everything, mostly for ease of installation, but also just in case the grease doesn't go exactly everywhere you want it to, because some of these places are a little bit difficult to get to. So something pretty specific to nitro tandem axle trailers is that there's two different equalizers that Nitro likes to use or has used in the past. I don't really know why, but there's this one here that I have that's very short from here to this distance between the two bolts. There is another design that is much taller and there, this distance here is much greater. So if you install this kit, you're gonna to need to do something with your fenders because it's actually going to lower your trailer closer to the ground. Don't know why they did that, but for this kit and for this shape and this size of equalizer, I shouldn't have any problems with my fenders whatsoever, but I did take those initial measurements just to make sure. Now, before I continue on with this process, I have the wheels off, I have the other side supported, the other side, I left the wheels on just for safety purposes, just in case something happens over there, the wheels are still on. Over here, I have two jack stands, one in front, one behind, same over there. And I also have two jacks supporting the axles for when I break these bolts loose on the equalizer. So the first thing we're gonna do is break all these bolts off, and then the two axles should be uh, freely supported, or free to move, except for I have them held up by jacks right now. So hopefully they don't do too much movement and everything kind of uh, stays nice. And I could definitely see why uh, leaving the other side on the ground would be 
not so beneficial to this process because that would definitely leave uh, two leaf springs on the other side uh, in tension, which would cause these to want to move. I'm going to go ahead and take these off. I'm going to take it off camera and take them off, and then we'll start putting the assembly back together. And when I start doing that, I'll, I'll point out any issues that I had or anything that came up. So, so far, I hadn't had to use too many tools that I hadn't planned on, so let's keep going. All right, so I got all the nuts. I got all the nuts off. They're actually kind of puny looking compared to what I'm going to be putting on there. So, hey, let's, uh, let's see if I can get one of these guys out of here. So maybe I'll just grab it and pull it out maybe. Just got some vice grips here. It's not, it looks like it's attached well. There you go. Should come out pretty easily. These are pretty similar design to what I'm putting on there. Uh, it looks like the bolts aren't supposed to spin, but I made them spin with an impact. I was worried about how the shackles were gonna look, but they really don't look that bad. They're definitely not as beefy as what I'm about to huh, install. So, I mean, that's, that's a huge difference there. So, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is for the longevity. That actually came out very easily. This, this actually entire assembly is loose enough to pull out by hand. So, I'm just going to kind of put this back together so, it's to, so I don't lose all the parts in case I need to use them again since they are in you know, somewhat decent shape. I can definitely tell you the inserts are shot. That is a guarantee, I can see that from here. That's why we're going with uh, brass bushings instead of those nylon bushings. Okay, so a real quick lesson, I did not know this, so I apologize for probably doing this the wrong way. On all the bolts, you probably should not use an impact at all, or at least not on the bolt side. On the nut side, it's probably okay. Uh, the reason for that is, is because they all have these, let me get my face out of here. They all have these grooves in here that lock it in, and that goes for the shackles and the hanger bolts. So lesson learned on my part, I still had to hammer it out, so there should be plenty of good metal here. So we're gonna start reassembly. Starting with the equalizer, we're gonna hang it first. Drag it over here. Along with, I got my bolt here. I've already got it pre-greased. So we're gonna put it on up here. Slide it through. Got my nut for the other side. Uh, See if I could do it with my ratchet. I like doing things with a ratchet. So something that's really not mentioned in a lot of tutorial videos is that you have to drive this in with a hammer. So on ones that already have fittings on them, so for the other hangers at the very end, we're gonna need to use some kind of, um, I guess that I'm gonna use an impact socket nail it on there to get it all the way on there. Uh, this one I'm just going to hit directly because, well, there's no insert there. The, the inserts are on the sides here. So anyways, we're going to finish hammering this in. Uh, then we're going to start working on these bushings and then it'll be time to reinstall shackles. So I'm going to do that because that's really loud. I am going to get off camera again. So the instructions say to tighten this bolt down to somewhere between 30 and 50 foot pounds. I tied mine to 40 since it's right in the middle of 30 to 50. So the old torque wrench came in handy. We're gonna put him to the side for now. And now we're gonna go ahead and try to get these bushings out. I can see that these bushings are very worn out so it shouldn't take much to tap them on out. They are definitely Nylon. And that should just pull on out. And uh, just to kind of give you an idea of why you probably should do this, take a look there. Look how thin that one side is. The back side's a little better. 
I mean, it's even got a, a small hole already worn in it. So it would have lasted a little longer, but as much traveling as I like to do, this guy was not going to make it. So we're going to go ahead and put him with the rest of my parts, drive this other one out. Shouldn't take more than a, a second or two. Then get ready to reassemble real quick. There's the other one. It is definitely getting a little thin in the middle here. It's kind of, might be hard to see. It's actually wearing more in the middle than anywhere else. So it's kind of hard to see on this one. Uh, but there's that one. We'll keep this one as well. Both of our inserts are out. I'm gonna use some of the spare grease on here. Just grease up uh, these two bushings. I think this is a good opportunity to use an old bolt. So we're gonna use an old bolt. Just kind of stick it in here. Give her some love taps. And that's the first bushing, so good use for the old bolt. Probably could have put a little grease in there. I will this time, just to help it out. Probably should have done that to start with. Make a little less extra grease and put it on the outside. Whoops. And we'll do this other one real quick. And there's number two in. Sorry if that's really loud. And now it's time to do shackles. This should be super easy. And give her some love taps. Nothing crazy, just it wasn't very hard, just enough to get her forced in. So this one's not lining up all that well. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the back side of this shackle on on this side. And get a couple of my nuts started. Just started just so things stay in line. So since this one isn't aligning, so what I need to do it's kind of get it somewhat started and I can see that I need to lift this side of the equalizer up. So we're gonna lift it up just a little bit, just enough so, yep, there we go. It will just go on in. There we go, it's in. We'll put the back side of the shackle on. So maybe this is where I need the clamps. So I'm gonna clean my hands up and try to clamp this thing down a little bit. Cause the back of the shackle is not going on as easily as I thought it should. And it was that easy. Now it's on. Need to just get the other nut on. So now all I'm gonna do is tighten the backs of these shackles up uh, using my ratchet and then I'm going to torque it uh, to whatever my instructions say. Uh, I think it's probably the same 30 to 50 foot pounds and we'll do 40. So I'm just going to kind of snug them up and then we'll go from there. Okay, so real quickly, I uh, forgot a couple things. First, you need to put anti-seize on your bolts. Uh, I actually just put it on the nuts. I just inserted it on the nuts and then tightened them down. Uh, that should be sufficient for the bolt or uh, for the nut side and the bolts. And one other mistake I made, I uh, got two torque settings confused. 
For the shackles, you're supposed to be between 30 and 50, and also on the hanger bolts on uh, the springs on both ends, those are also 30 to 50. This one is supposed to be the main one, it's supposed to be between 65 and 75 foot pounds. So, made a, made a little bit of a mistake there, just double checking here. Yeah, it's 65 and 75, so I'll tighten this guy up a little more. And then I'll make sure all of these guys go from uh, 30 to 50. So I'm going to leave those at 40 foot pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and torque them on down. And then we're going to move on up to the front leaf spring uh, and go ahead and take that bolt out, go ahead and, and replace that, and then move to the back. The rest of this process is going to be pretty stinking easy, especially since I know what I'm doing at this point. So I went ahead and re-greased everything on the equalizer, so we're in good shape there. Now we're just going to go ahead, we have the axle supported, uh, we're going to break the nut loose, punch this guy back out, take out the insert, uh, install this brass one just kind of like we did earlier on the uh, back leaf spring or the back of the spring. and. Repeat for the back and then we will be done with this side. So this process overall isn't that bad. I'm doing it here by myself, but note that I'm giving myself plenty of time. And if I don't finish today, that's fine. I'll come back tomorrow and finish it up. Um, but I don't see any reason why I shouldn't finish this entire project today. I am gonna continue, I'm gonna break this loose. And then uh, I'll show you guys how I knock out the insert again. I'll lower the axle and all that good stuff. So let's keep going. Okay, so I have the bolt out. We're going to lower down the axle a little bit. Well, that's low as it's going to go, which means I need to lift the other axle some. So that's what the equalizer does. Uh, it'll When I lift the back side, it'll, lift, it'll uh, force this side to go down. So just kind of watch. Okay, it's got some tension on it. We're gonna loosen this up. There we go, I'll do it again. I'll lower it a little more. So this part of the equalizer, we're gonna have to let it fall forward a little bit. So I've gotta lower my jack quite a bit. There we go. And now let's uh, turn it back this way. Just gotta learn how to manipulate your axles. So now we can fully see the insert. It is definitely worn down. I'm gonna have to move probably in y'all's way. So I'm gonna knock this guy out exactly like I did the other one. So not too big of a deal. Just use a little punch, knock it on out, and then we'll regrease and put another one on. Okay, so now we're gonna lift the axle back up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and then Put my anti-seas on here. Got my nut ready. I already drove the bushing in uh, with the bolt is the same time as I was driving out that nylon one. All right, so it seems like I need to lower the other one. So we're gonna lower it a little bit. It's all about finagling your jacks to get this point to get everything together. There we go. Just need a little, a little assistance from Mr. Pry Bar. Let's go ahead and get our bolt lined up. Sorry, I am probably blocking y'all's view. And they said get a 3 8 That's definitely not 3 8 Really just need to get a bolt, well, a socket here that I can put over the top so I don't damage a grease insert. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and give her a few love taps. Okay, we're not going in easily, so that's something's wrong. There we go. Now it's going in easily. All right, so now we're to the point where I need to put some mustard on it. So let's give her a few mustard snaps. Oh, turn it the other way. This is going to take a minute, so I'm going to come back here in a minute. All right, guys, one last tip here. Um, it is easier to go ahead and torque this guy down on these hangers and then do a little bit of hammering and then torque it again just to make sure it's fully seated in the hanger. Uh, I, I did go all the way down to 50 pounds like it was a, like the max of it asked to. So this is 50, the other one's 
65 to 75 and everything else is 30, 30 to 50, which I'm doing everything to 50. I'm gonna do another grease on this guy. Then I'm gonna call this project done because I'm gonna knock out the back side. I'm gonna do the other side as well. But for all you need to know on how to do this job, that's pretty much it. Uh, just remember that uh, you can manipulate your axles and move them around as necessary to make sure that you make things line up as they need to. Hopefully this video taught you guys enough about doing this that you have the confidence to do it. Uh, just a bit of warning, if you're not very familiar, you know, mechanically, I wouldn't recommend doing this. Just go ahead and pay someone else to do it. But overall, it's really not that hard of a process. Just take your time, make sure you're being safe, make sure you're double and triple checking the things that you need to do. I've already had a learning in this process and hopefully it passes on to you. So I have finished the job today. Excuse the noise, I got the door open. Getting ready to take off and get a bit of her first test run. But I did finish the job. I will say there was one thing I was worried about and that was some clearances. Let me show you real quick. So as you can tell, there's a, a pretty close distance here. It's not as close as it appears in the camera, but I have fully articulated the axles while I had the, while I had the trailer lifted and it doesn't get actually any closer. In fact, it just gets further away when you articulate them. So I was a little worried about the, the clearance there. It's mostly because the shackles are so thick is why it's so close. Otherwise I wouldn't even be concerned about it, but overall, I'm not too worried about it after doing my little test run in the garage here. That was the one concern that I had after finishing my install and I just wanted to share that with y'all. So I am about to take it on its first test run, but before I do that, let's check out the heights of my fenders real quick. I don't think they've really changed, uh, or at least they don't appear to have. So we're gonna start like we did before. We'll just work our way around. 27 and 5 eighths. This one is 27 and a quarter. Walking on around doing the rear one first, just like last time. We'll call it uh, 26 and 3 eighths. And then the front one here is 26 and 5 eighths. So I don't recall the first ones at this point in time, but I don't recall them being that much uh, different from what I just read off. So hopefully, there's no change in ride or anything, ride height or anything. Uh, I do expect a better ride, so uh, I do need to take it to the house. I'm gonna check some air pressures when I get there, and I'll let you guys know how the ride, my first little, I don't know, it's like a three mile ride, but it's pretty bumpy, so I should get some good feedback for you guys. So we made it back to the house, really not at any speed or anything, 30, 35 miles an hour at most, because it's going through town. Several bumps, things that I noticed, no squeaking, no popping. Uh, the only thing that you could hear are the leaf springs flexing. You can hear you know, the metal flexing and that's kind of normal, but no popping and no just loud screeching. So that's actually a really good positive. Double checked clearances. I went over a, I don't know, really, it's not really a curb, but a transition from someone's driveway to a road or the, shop driveway to the, the road. Real good flex on the axles. Never even got close to, to rubbing anything. So I think my worries there are over at that point. Now it's just, hey, let's take it on a high speed trip and let's kind of see how it does. Honestly, there's no way for me to show it to you. So I'm just going to give you guys a report later. But for now, I'm going to go get some uh, sunscreen on, wash up a little bit, and we're going to go ahead to the lake and see how my new equalizers do. I'm pretty happy with the work that I did. Uh, I was, you know, earlier worried about the entire process, but taking my time and getting it done wasn't too big of a deal. Anyways, I'll give you guys a report after the fishing trip, so I'll see y'all in a minute. So it's actually been a few months later and I kind of forgot to record an outro right after that fishing trip, so I apologize for that. I will say overall, the Dexter Easy Flex kit has been fantastic. I haven't had any issues. I even went back after about three or four trips and retorqued everything. 
and nothing was even remotely loose, so everything was torqued just fine. It didn't even bother to come loose. I've done several inspections, especially when I drop the boat off at the lake and then I pull it up. I'll take a few minutes to, to look at some things on the trailer, and I have zero complaints. So if you're even remotely thinking about doing this, I would highly recommend it, especially with the condition that I found those nylon inserts. It wasn't long until they were going to be, you know, start wearing through that metal and eventually causing a huge reliability issue. Thank you guys so much for watching, but just like always, until next time, get out there and go catch you some fish.